Hey guys, it's Sanjay Shravastav, and I'm super excited today because we're gonna have a discussion on artificial intelligence and specifically machine learning. And to have the discussion with, I've invited Karthik Murugesan. First off, Karthik, welcome. Hi, hey, Sanjay, how are you? Good, thank you. And Karthik, by the way, joins us from the East Coast. He runs our machine learning program and he's been deep in the artificial intelligence space working with many of the projects that I think we're involved in. And I spoke with him a little earlier and I thought it was really intriguing some of the things he's and his team's been working on. And I wanted to share a little bit of that in the interest of getting a conversation going. And so with that, you know, Karthik, I want to turn to you and I'm going to just, first things first, I mean, you, you, you're involved in some of the funnest projects that I get to see. Give us one example of something you're involved in. Sure, Sanjay. So the most interesting work that I've been doing lately is on translating some of the medical terms. Oh, and... so, <laughs> translating medical terms, and you're saying it's most interesting, it doesn't sound that interesting to me. So uh, how do we understand that? How do we relate to that? Why is that important? So think of this. You're going to a doctor's office. He writes you a prescription These, that contains several abbreviations and, medic and Latin terms. Then you go to pharmacist and they translate it and you have to wait for 10, 20 minutes for that and the label is printed and then you take the, lab, the medication and go uh -huh. home. Now, so what is this thing? You're taking Latin, you're taking medical terms, you're taking abbreviated stuff that's written across different countries and different kind of methodologies and you're helping translate that into actually the label I'm going to see when I pick up my prescription at the pharmacy. Is that right? That's right. Yes. Awesome. And I guess that not only you know, makes it faster so I don't have to wait on those uh, every time I go there, but also increases the quality, it makes the process more efficient. And I guess now you've got the data digitally available and you can use it for other things like safety and other considerations. Would that be a good way to think about it? Absolutely. I mean, even if um, a technician makes a mistake, let's say the, the doctor puts the wrong dot instead of 5MG or 50MG or 10MG and you know it's a pediatric drug, you probably, the doctor may not, the pharmacist may oversee it, but the software will not. Yeah. It compares the age and you can easily find out uh, the anomaly there. So I can see why you're so excited because obviously it drives efficiency, it drives quality, it increases drug safety, and frankly, it, can create, it improves the experience of the consumer when they're out there trying to pick it up and get on with their daily lives. And so, okay, so, we, so it's interesting and it's great that you're working on it. Um, What's the key to doing it right? I mean, these things can take a long, long time and we could spend the rest of you know, the next few years doing this, but how have you cracked the code of that? So the key to cracking the code is, you know, we have already done this with another division and the learnings from there is now transferred here and we have accelerated because we have learnings that are translated and several other components that we learned along the way are now standardized and transferred right here. So it's kind of yeah. fast. So hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, uh, let's step back. I want to unpeel that a little bit. You use a couple of good words that I like a lot. You liked transfer learning. You use transfer learning and you use the word accelerator. First off, tell me about an accelerator. What is it? What does it do? What's the purpose? Sure. So the word came from image recognition. So first time you try to train a neural network for dogs, you might require more samples. But then if you want to train a totally new image, like a cat, you don't require that many number of images and time because the knowledge from learning the previous image is now transferred here. The same concept is what we are using here, but for a different use case. Interesting. So, so just so I get this right, you're saying, look, Sanjay, you can get started with something that is a broad horizontal engine that is meant to recognize things, or you can start on the journey of, it already recognizes animals, it only already gets four-legged animals, and I can now tune it a little bit more to get to cats. Is that kind of the idea of accelerating the journey of starting from sort of bottoms up, grounds up, to starting with the right building blocks that allow you to get to the right endpoint quickly? Correct, so that is, that is precisely what it is. And then there are other differences when it comes to business context on the data is different in different places. The business is slightly different from what one person does. Even though it's the same use case, they do it a little different in each company. We take for those variations and then we create this accelerator that, that also takes the knowledge from the previous learning. Okay, so that's really interesting because um, 
because accelerating the deployment of AI in these applications is really a key need. We hear about it all the time from clients we serve. And I think the approach you're taking around using transfer learning and starting with the right building blocks does appear logical. I guess the question that comes to my mind is how do you make it whole? I mean, you know, you're working on so many different things. And, um, and then of course, this isn't about just the science of machine learning, it's about the engineering, it's about actually delivering something that's gonna be up and running mission critical environments 24 by seven. How are you thinking about the architecture or something like this to have it up and running by itself? So that's a very good question, Sanjay, because uh, the most important aspect of making this productionalizing is the architecture. And you know, um, when you do it on a, without an architecture, you have to do it, you know, you have to train a model, you take some time, and then you build a data model, you have several layers, you have to patch all of them together. And finally, what, if you take it to the client, it has to work in their environment, they might be working on a environment that is not the environment you train them. So fixing all of these components together and making an end-to-end -end solution so you can you can make this work quickly is the, the art of our architecture and science of how we do that. And it's the difference between experimentation and industrialization. It's the difference between doing something in a lab versus running something in a, in a real life mission critical environment, correct? Uh, partly correct, yes, because here what we do is we train it and we can scale it in any form and shape because we, we give them the image and the image can be scaled up uh, for the data that can come in. It can be scaled up for whatever uh, comes in. Not only that, it recognizes the difference in the business process that you have and it chooses the appropriate version of the model to be executed. So it is super fast. You know, in fact, you don't need to tune. You don't need to have all these layers integrated and they are all packaged in one and given to the client. Got it. And you know, um, I hate to bring this up, but one of, the, one of the concerns we all have and we've been thinking through as part of sort of how we approach it is the whole issue of privacy and data. And there's obviously a renewed focus and a larger focus on that in the world of AI. I mean, as you think about architecture, are you separating data as a layer from the models as a layer and sort of give us some thoughts on how to best approach um, keeping all this secure and functioning in a, in a, in a real life environment. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, if you've seen every client names their data elements differently, you know, you could go to a client and they might name um, an yeah, item industry. number or something like that. But yeah. we create an industry model or a canonical model which you can map to whatever client calls it and thereby we have separated out the data layer from other people and yeah. it has been abstracted. Yeah. Once you do that, it is super easy for us to take you to several places and you can, you can reuse this over and over again and saves tremendous amount of time uh, to productionalize it. So that's one aspect. The same with the model. There's minor variations in business. You, we we uh, can encapsulate that and we give that uh, which talks very easily to our model that we created. And so on, you know, the third aspect that you raised about uh, PI or personal uh, sensitive information. We anonymize this data while we learn. So it doesn't really matter what we learn uh, from clients, whether it's sensitive or non-sensitive, but at the end, the learning doesn't have any uh, sensitive information. It's just a raw learning. So that way it is super safe to get transferred from one place to the other. So this is, I mean, this is a really important part, right? Because basically what you're saying is you've broken the architecture into multiple layers that you've separated a use case specific data layer with all of its intricacies uh, into something that is specific to that environment. And then you've sort of abstracted the learnings of that above into the next layer above, right? So that, so, so that there's, a, there's actually a separation between the detailed data that exists, whether it's encrypted and whether it's anonymized or not, from the actual models that are being generated off of that. And then once you generate the models, you're putting it into a, as a, a I'm assuming it's available as a service that, that then gets deployed in this physical separation, this idea of separating the, the connection points is a big part of driving safety in the use of AI, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. And uh, the most important feature is what you said last. You can take our model and put it in 
any environment. It, it can be uh, Azure, AWS, on-premise uh, servers, or it could be a ERP system like SAP. We have uh, we have uh, uh, models or, or uh, things that you can put and reuse them. So it's kind of like you take the model, you can put it wherever you want, and it works. Yeah, I think you know. I grew up uh, um, uh, going to college, learning computer science, and I remember back then we used to have big monolithic computers, and that's sort of what the world uh, had. Uh, my my boys today, young young kids. They're growing up assembling their own chipsets on different motherboards and one's got a gaming computer, the other's got a streaming computer, highly specialized things. And it's a little bit the same thing, right? But you're taking AI, which is a generic kind of broad-based science and actually encapsulating that in these chipsets, in these Lego blocks that, you know, are your accelerators, I think is the word you used, that you can sort of intermix and kind of quickly pull together and deliver a value chain. Well, it's been a fascinating conversation. Look, I always enjoy getting in the details of some of the stuff and, 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 the, and AI is driving so much change, so much transformation in the world. And, you know, it's evolving science and, and we some of us don't get to study it as deeply as I think you do in the line of work you are. So it's really great talking to you, Karthik. Take, thank you for taking the time. Good luck with everything you're doing. and We look forward to a lot more. Thank you, Sanjay. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.